One of the best ways to get me to buy a book is put a cute animal on the cover. Not gonna lie, going into this book, I really did not think I was going to like the ex-boyfriend's brother trope. But I hate to say it, I'm eating it up. I'm eating it up and there are no crumbs left. If it's available on Kindle Unlimited and it's free and I have the physical copy as well, I'm reading it on my Kindle. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we are going to be doing the ultimate bookish vlog, okay? I have so many fun book-related activities planned. I have a book haul. I'm going to show you guys what's on my Kindle. We're going to be reorganizing my bookshelves, and we're also going to be reading together. I'm going to be reading my current reads. We're going to have a little bit of reading vlog time. It's going to be a hoot, I promise. So with that being said, let's get into it. So we're starting off this video with a book haul. I have about nine new books to show you guys and I can't wait to get into it. So the first book of our haul is Fall the Guardians by Vanessa White. This is actually the sponsor of our video. So thank you so much, Vanessa, for sending me a copy of your book and for also sponsoring today's video. So this book is based on real life events that happened to Vanessa in the early 90s. It focuses a lot on the Troubled Teen program and shines a light on what really happens when you send a difficult teen away. At the age of 13, Vanessa was sent away from everything she loved and knew, and she was forced to go to a military boarding school. And this boarding school was no ordinary school. It was actually ran by a religious cult. This book is powerful and heart-wrenching, and it's a must-read for anyone who has ever been or known a difficult teen. Anyone who attended a troubled teen program, and especially for any parent that has sent away a difficult child or is thinking that sending their child away is the best or only option. This book is available on Amazon. I'll have it linked in the description if you're interested in reading this. Thank you again for Vanessa for sending me this and for sponsoring today's video. So the next book of our haul is The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by Marina Zapata. I feel like this is one of the OG book talk books. It did recently get a new redesigned cover, so this is the new edition. I think it's so cute. This book has definitely been on my radar since literally forever, and I finally bought it. I feel like this is one of the books that you go to the bookstore and you're like, I've heard good things about that book, and then you just never pick it up. Well, I finally picked it up, okay? So if you do not know, this is a slow burn romance. I'm pretty sure it's also a sports romance. It's a football romance. She is his assistant, I think. Don't quote me on that. I usually go into books blind, so everything I'm telling you is just like facts that I think I've read on reviews on Bookstagram. Who knows? I've only read one other book by Marina Zapata and I loved it. It was from Luke Off With Love and it literally changed my perception of slow burn romances. Before that book, I was a slow burn hater, but Marina Zapata changed me. So I cannot wait to read this. So the next book I got was Redeemed by Lauren Asher. This is the fourth and final book of the Dirty Air series. The Dirty Air series is an interconnected standalone series and it's about F1 racers. Who knew F1 racing could be hot? Lauren Asher did, so that's why she wrote this series, and now we're all obsessed. I've only read the first two books of this series, so I do need to catch up, because I've heard that the third and fourth book are like the fan favorites, and I want to read this supposed masterpiece. So this book is about Santiago and Chloe, and I'm pretty sure it's a fake dating trope. Something happened and Santiago is dealing with a scandal. So I think he ends up fake dating Chloe to like kind of help his reputation. I am such a sucker for a good fake dating trope. So I have a feeling that this might be my favorite in the series. Who knows? So the fourth book of this haul was a much anticipated release and that was Bride by Allie Hazelwood. I have my lovely boyfriend Nolan to thank for this book. I was literally ranting to him about how much I wanted this book on release day, but I didn't want to go and spend money on books right now just because my physical TBR is overflowing. And literally the next day, an Amazon package of this book was on my doorstep. Best Boyfriend Award goes to Nolan. So Bride is Ali Hazelwood's newest release. It is actually a paranormal romance and it's a werewolf and vampire 
relationship, I guess. And this is also an arranged marriage trope. I love a good marriage of convenience. Like, love it. This is also my book club's pick of March. So if you did not know, I have a book club on my bookstagram, currently.overbooked. To join, all you have to do is subscribe to my Instagram and you'll be a member. You'll be added to a designated group chat for members. You'll be able to vote on what we read every month and you'll get exclusive content and posts from me. It's honestly just a great way to meet other bookish people and to kind of have a community of bookworms. I'm not gonna lie, I am a little scared to read this book. I think I'm one of the last few people to have not read it in my club yet, just because I've been seeing so many mixed reviews. And I think that's partly due to the fact that this book takes place in the Omegaverse, which some people just don't vibe with, okay? And I don't know where I'm gonna fall on that spectrum. Like I'm either gonna love it or hate it. And I just don't know. So the next book I got was the Happy Ever After playlist by Abby Jimenez. Abby Jimenez has quickly become one of my favorite authors this year. I absolutely fell in love with her writing style when I read Part of Your World by her last month. And now I'm just like on an Abby Jimenez kick, okay? So this book is about Sloan and Jason. So Sloan found this lost dog. She reached out to the owner, but they never responded. So she just assumed this is my new dog. Like, Finally, after weeks of unanswered texts, she finally gets a response and the owner wants his dog back. And so there is some like tension from that. However, they just end up like talking and texting each other and they just have this connection. Like they really hit it off. And it turns out the owner of the dog is a famous musician. So it's a he's famous, she's not trope. It's also kind of like pen pal trope because they're texting each other and they have like this long distance friendship almost. I have heard such good things about this book. I'm pretty sure Haley Pham read it a while ago and really enjoyed it and said it was super cute. I'm also a sucker for animals on covers and I feel like most, if not all, of Abby Jimenez's books have some sort of cartoon animal on them and I just eat it up. I eat it up every time. One of the best ways to get me to buy a book is put a cute animal on the cover. So the next few books of this haul are all young adult books. They were actually sent to me by Sourcefire Books so thank you so much to Sourcefire Books for sending me these. I literally cannot wait to read them. So the first one I got was Bedazzled by by Ryan LaSala. This is an LGBTQ romance and both of the main characters are cosplayers. They actually met at a craft store. This is a second chance romance. Luca and Rafi actually broke up like a year ago I think because Luca was very apprehensive to come out to his family and that just caused a lot of turmoil in their relationship. I think this book sounds so cute. I absolutely love the cover. I haven't read a lot of YA LGBTQ romances so I'm really excited for this one. So the next book I got was My Life with the Walter Boys by Ali Novak. This was actually recently turned into a Netflix original series. I heard such good things about the book but also the show so I'm so happy to have a copy so I can finally read it and then watch the show because that's just how it's done. If there is a movie or TV adaption of a book I have to read the book first. So this book is about Jackie. Her parents parents actually died and she's sent to go live with the Walters who are her new guardians and this is definitely a 180 from the life that she is used to. First of all the Walters have 11 sons like that is so chaotic and wild and they also live on a ranch so small town trope like I've also heard that this book gives off the summer I turn pretty vibes, which I just love. Like, sign me up. Sign me up. So it's safe to say I will be reading this probably in the summer because I feel like it just gives off summer vibes. So the second to last book of my haul is Maybe Meant to Be by K.L. Walther. She's also the author of The Summer of Broken Rules, which I've heard great things about. This book is about Charlie and Sage. They are lifelong BFFs. Literally everyone and their parents 
friends think that they are going to end up together because that's how close they are. However, when a new student, Luke Morrissey, shows up to their school, him and Charlie just hit it off. They are drawn to one another. And this kind of opens up the window for Sage to get to know Charlie's twin brother, Nick, more. So we get like two love stories in this book. I just can't wait to see how all of this pans out. I have a feeling, I have a little bit of an inkling that there's going to be a lot of drama in this book. So the final book of our haul is Bring Me Your Midnight by Rachel Griffin. This is a YA romance fantasy. It's about Tana Fairchild, who is a witch, and her and her coven, Every Full Moon, release their magic into the ocean. And this kind of is to appease the mainlanders because then they're not at their full strength. Tana is also supposed to marry the governor's son. This is an arranged marriage to help build an alliance between her coven and the mainlanders on their island. However, However, one full moon, Tana forgets to release her magic into the ocean, and so she has her full strength of magic, and this is kind of an unprecedented situation for her. This is when Wolf comes into the scene. He claims to be part of a coven that practices dark magic, and instead of allowing Tana to release her powers into the ocean, he decides to teach her how to wield her magic and how to utilize her powers. I think this book sounds so interesting. I am such a sucker for a good one a fantasy romance. This book is also a forbidden love trope because Tana has to kind of make a decision that's impossible to make. She has to choose between her love and her duty, her loyalty to her coven. Like, sign me up. Sign me up. So that concludes my book haul. I think I'm gonna take some time and just read for a bit. I'm about 54% through Black Ties and White Lies by Kat Singleton. This is available on Kindle Unlimited. It's a billionaire romance with a fake fiance, fake dating trope. It's also workplace romance and forced proximity. I have just been flying through it. It's so easy to read, it's fast paced, it's spicy. It's literally everything you want in a romance book. I will say this time and time again. I love a male main character that knows what he wants and isn't afraid to fight for it. Like he's grumpy and he isn't afraid of commitment. Like love. Not gonna lie, going into this book, I really did not think I was going to like the ex-boyfriend's brother trope. But I hate to say it, I'm eating it up. I'm eating it up and there are no crumbs left. I just finished Black Ties and White Lies by Kat Singleton. If you love the He Falls First trope or the Boy Obsessed trope, this book, okay, this book is for you. He literally buys the company that she works at because she wasn't answering his phone calls. <laughs> like, oh my gosh. So basically, this book is about Margo and Beck, and Beck is actually Margo's ex's brother drama i know he basically goes to margo and is like i need your help there's a lot of scandalous articles about me in the media right now and the board of investors are worried and they want me to clean up my image so i want you to be my fake fiance to get them off my back and you know just to have everything go back to normal and margo is like why why would I do that? Like, why? Explain to me why I would help you, sir. And he's like, well, I know you're an artist. Like, so if you help me and you become my assistant and come live with me in New York, I will help you get an interview at this gallery that is like your dream job. And so basically, this is workplace romance because she's his assistant. It's forced proximity because they literally live together. Fake dating, fake fiance trope, billionaire romance, okay? Like, he has his own jet. I think for me, this book is a 3.5. I really loved the main male character. This book is very much invisible string and mastermind coded, okay? Like, Beck is a mastermind, and I love him for that. If you have read this book, this might be an out there opinion. I really don't know. But the third act breakup, I thought it was romantic, like what he did to her. I don't know why they, I don't know why it was such a conflict. Like, if a man did that for me, I'd be all over it. I'd be like, flattered.
So now that I finished this book, I think I might start another one. I might start Bride by Allie Hazelwood. That has been on my radar for quite some time. So yeah. Welcome to my bookshelf. So it is the next day. We are going to be reorganizing my bookshelf today just because it's gotten a little bit chaotic and unruly, at least for my taste. On the empty part of my shelves, there are stacks of books just like piled up because I'm too lazy to put them back after I've taken pictures of them for my bookstagram. And I just want to rectify this situation. So let's get started. We are at a new bookshelf. This is the third bookshelf I have. It is a built-in bookshelf in my apartment complex. This is where I house all my standalone books. I try to organize it by author, but sometimes I don't have multiple books by the same author. So I kind of just like let them be. It used to be rainbow coordinated, but honestly, that is just so hard to upkeep that I've decided to go against that aesthetic. So yeah. shelves are reorganized and looking fantastic. Let's talk about Bride. So I started reading Bride yesterday after I finished Black Ties and White Lies by Kat Singleton. The plan was to lay down, maybe read 100 pages before going to bed, and then finishing it the next day, which is today. That did not happen. I ended up staying up till 2 a.m. to finish this book. That's how much I was addicted to this book, okay? I just love that Allie Hazelwood is branching out into other genres that aren't her like STEM romances. Don't get me wrong, I love her STEM romances. I eat them up every single time. 
However, it is so refreshing to see authors branch out and try new things. Like, I loved Check and Mate, which was her YA attempt, and I loved Bride, which was her paranormal romance. And let's just say, at the end of the book, she does allude to the fact that there may be another book about Serena, which is Misery's best friend, and I would eat that up. I would love it. This was also my first time ever reading like anything with a werewolf. I have read some fantasy books that pertain to vampires, but nothing with like werewolves or like any of those dynamics. And let's just say it probably won't be the last. I feel like this is a fantasy world that I have just unlocked and now I want more of it. I also really loved the mystery subplot. I liked that there was more going on than just the romance, especially because I have been reading a lot of just romance books and sometimes Sometimes you need something else going on, okay? And I think this book did that wonderfully. Overall, I think this book is a five star for me. I know this book has such mixed opinions. I really went into it thinking I was gonna like rate it maybe a three or a four. I did not expect a five star read. I just could not put it down. I also feel like this book introduced me to a new subgenre that I had no clue I was even interested in. So. That's what makes her five star material. So before we end off today's video, I thought it'd be super fun to talk about what books I have on my Kindle. So I ended up getting a Kindle for Christmas. I have always been a physical book stan. I just never thought I would enjoy reading on non-paper, if I'm gonna be honest, just because I hate reading on like my iPad, things like that. However, I love my Kindle so much. Once you get a Kindle, you're done for. Like, you cannot go back. I still love reading my physical books. Do not get me wrong, okay? However, if it's available on Kindle Unlimited and it's free and I have the physical copy as well, I'm reading it on my Kindle. That's just kind of how the cookie crumbles nowadays. So I do have a lot of books downloaded on my Kindle right now just because I recently went on a trip and when I'm on a trip, I love to mood read. Like I just don't know what I'm in the mood for, okay? Plus I had a four hour plane ride there and back. That is ample reading time, people. So let's start off with all the romance books that I have downloaded. I think I have about 10. First, I have Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. I do have the physical copy of this book, but again, if I have the physical copy and it's on Kindle Unlimited, I'm gonna read it on my Kindle. Like, sorry, not sorry. And then I also have The Fake Out by Stephanie Archer. This is the second book in the Vancouver Storm series. It's a fake dating hockey romance. I really loved Behind the Net because it had one of my favorite niche book tropes which is grumpy, but not an asshole. He just doesn't know how to socialize. Like, so he comes off like super standoffish. Like, I love that trope so much. I also have The Bodyguard by Catherine Center. This is a bodyguard romance where the girl is a bodyguard and I haven't ever read a book like that. I think that's a really cool concept. This is also a fake dating trope, I'm pretty sure. And then we have Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh. Binding and Keeping 13 were recently put on Kindle Unlimited and those books are massive. So the fact that it's available on Kindle Unlimited is like a godsend for me. So I don't have to hold those gigantic books while reading it. I'm really hoping they put the rest of the series on KU, but a girl can dream, I guess. And then next we have In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yeros. I'm gonna be completely honest. I don't know anything about this book. I recently went on a trip on spring break and right before I went to the airport, I downloaded a bunch of different audiobooks on my phone and this was one of them. So <laughs> that's all I know. And then we have Black Ties and White Lies, Pretty Rings and Broken Things. These are the two books of the Black Tie Billionaire series. I'm pretty sure it's a trilogy, so there's gonna be a third book. Pretty Rings and Broken Things is a marriage of convenience billionaire romance. And if you know me, you know I love a good marriage of convenience trope. So I literally read Black Ties and White Lies so I could read Pretty Rings and Broken Things. Even though it's an interconnected standalone series, I can read it out of order. But why would I do that? <laughs> Why would I take the easy way out? And then I have the Possessing Her duology. This is a stalker dark romance, I think. I read the first one on the plane ride to Las Vegas for my spring break trip and I liked it, but it's like nothing really to write home about. He's a lawyer. He does all the like dark romance MMC things like touch her and you'll die and I'm gonna break you or blah blah. blah. And in my head, I'm like, you're literally a lawyer. Like, 
No, like it doesn't hit as hard if he was like a mafia guy and saying all that stuff. I will continue it. I just don't know when I'm going to continue it. But they're about 300 pages each, which I think is the perfect length for a romance book. So that's kind of why I downloaded those. Just because if I'm in the mood for something fast paced, easy to read, I know I have something on my Kindle. And then lastly, we have Packed in the Penalty Box. After I finished Bride, I kind of went on a deep dive on TikTok for Rex if you liked Bride and like now you should read this because it's similar vibes and this was one of them it's a hockey romance it takes place in the Omega verse and I'm gonna give it a shot like who cares who cares this is a judgment free zone as long as you're reading things that make you happy that's all that matters so now for all the non-romance books I have on my Kindle. Most, if not all, of these books are thrillers because one of my 2024 reading goals was to branch out into new genres besides romance and fantasy. So naturally, I am branching out into thriller mysteries. The first one I have is No Exit by Taylor Adams. I'm pretty sure this was made into a movie recently. I don't really know much about it because this was one of the books that I ended up downloading right before my plane ride, but I'm pretty sure Sarah Carolla read it recently in one of her vlogs and she did end up really enjoying it so there's that and then I have the housemaid and the housemaid's secret again these are two books that I have in physical form but since they're available on Kindle Unlimited I'm gonna read them on my Kindle I read the housemaid on my four-hour plane ride and I loved it so I ended up downloading the second book the sequel and I'm super excited to read it I really like Rita McFadden's writing style I think it's super beginner friendly if you're new to thrillers honestly the housemaid gave me Verity vibes by Colleen Hoover and then the final book we have is The Wedding Party by L.R.J. Jones. This was another one of the books that I downloaded right before my plane ride. I ended up listening to like 15% of this on my plane ride, except I was like halfway asleep most of the time, so my brain did not pick up any of it. However, I'll probably revisit it soon just because I do want to read more thrillers. So we're keeping it on here. We're not undownloading it. So those were all the books on my Kindle TBR. I hope you enjoyed this ultimate bookish video. If you want more videos like this, let me know down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. I have a lot of things planned for this channel, so, so stick around so you don't miss out. I also have a bookstagram currently dot overbooked. I post daily, I post reviews, reels, book updates, anything bookish related I post on there. So go follow me if you want to see more of what I'm up to on a day-to-day -day basis. And yeah, I will see you next time. Goodbye.